advantage of the day. Okay. When you get an opportunity in this game, you make a play. Yeah. The playmakers on three. One, two, three. Playmakers. Touchdown, Kansas City. The Chiefs are right in the thick of it, baby. And hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Defending the Kingdom. Mitch Holtis with you, along with the man we call the shop, the barbershop, the Spider-Man, 59, played 10 years in the National Football League in many glorious days with the Kansas City Chiefs, now a leader, great involved in, greatly involved in our community, Sean Barber. This edition, this episode of Defending the Kingdom brought to you by our great folks at Bose. I like your headphones, by the way. Uh, Where'd you get those Bose 700s? I'll tell you, you can now personalize your environment. 11 levels of noise cancellation. I saw these. I was in a retailer the other day, and they had a big display of these 700s. I'm like, oh, whoa, these are nice. And people were looking at them, and I just wanted to say I didn't, but I wanted to say, yeah, I might want to get some. Then I was looking for mine, shop. I don't know if you're, you ever lose yours. My wife had them on, right? <laughs> Come on. What's yours, what's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine. But not what's mine, you know, all that. So I think for the holidays, we may have to get our ladies a Bose 700 headphone. Hey, man, happy wife, happy life. I know that's the thing. That, that's the primary rule, number one in the house. Right? God rules all. God handles all. He handles all. Lay things. Number two, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> I keep to those two points, and I'm good. You've said a lot of wise things in your life. Nothing with more wisdom than that. Well, speaking of wisdom, this episode of Defending the Kingdom, we're entitling the uh, the Gold Jacket Bull. And I've changed my background for this day because right here is the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid. I think we both in a, are in agreement that someday he will be in Canton, Ohio, in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. This Sunday at 325, he'll be on one sideline. On the other sideline will be Bill Belichick of the New England Patriots. He, too, will also be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame one day. They are two of the top six winningest coaches in the history of this league, now in its 101st year. But I I don't want to get lost here, Shop, on what we're going to have this weekend. This is Curly Lambeau of the Packers coaching against George Hallis of the Bears. This is Landry of the Cowboys against Shula of the Dolphins. We have two of the all-time greatest coaches that will meet sideline to sideline. And I just don't want to lose the moment because it's a special one. Man, we went from uh, MVP, MVP battling against on Monday Night Football with the Ravens versus the Chiefs. And now we have a quarterback who was on the MVP level. He's being the resurrection, like a phoenix rising out of the dust. Uh, the resurrection of Cam Newton is what Coach Belichick has done. Uh, he went ahead and let his organization move on from one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of our sport, Tom Brady, and he didn't blink. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't get emotional. It wasn't the end of a dynasty. It wasn't the end of anything. He just retooled with another MVP caliber quarterback to run his offense. The, the brain trust over there at New England uh, with the Patriots, Offensively, defensively, uh, it, it's something to be uh, uh, lifted up. It's something that other organizations aspire to be because the level of consistency in that organization, when you talk about winning ball games, having winning seasons, seasons, winning your, your division and winning conferences, everybody is still trying to hit the mark that they set many years ago. Did you ever play in the Hall of Fame game, that very first game in August? Did you ever play in that game? I thought I thought I played in like a preseason or something where we had an extra preseason game one year, but I don't know if I ever played. Uh, and that's the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's a Hall of Fame game. It's a preseason game. They have it in Canton at that high school stadium, right by the Hall of Fame. Uh, and by the way, for those of you who are engaged in this episode of Defending the Kingdom, entitled the Gold Jacket Bowl this Sunday, if you have a chance to go to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, it is magnificent. It is a must. C trip. I'm going to, my wife and I, we're going to just, we're going to road trip it and go there one day. I've been there a couple times. She hasn't. I've broadcast this game a couple times. That game in August, it's always the first game of every game, right? Super Bowl's the last game. Hall of Fame game's the first game. Uh, and the Chiefs have played in a couple times. I remember one time, the airport's small. We're trying to race the Packers to get there first. And they got five buses. We got five buses. They beat us. It like, took us like three more hours to get home. 
because the Packers beat us to the little bitty Akron Canton Airport. Uh, but that being said, the Pro Football Hall of Fame's awesome. It is a shrine to toughness, greatness, discipline, the things that you and I love about this game. But you just talked about Bill Belichick. Let's just look at these uh, credentials. Because what I want to explore and have the discussion about here, Andy Reid and Bill Belichick have done this now for a combined 40-plus years. And what they've done is won. And they've won at a high level. We know Belichick has the six Super Bowl titles, nine Super Bowl appearances, 30, uh, 31 playoff wins, 275 wins, 17 division titles. Now, I talk, I say the division titles, the little box. You check the little box when you're filling that application. You got all the fields filled, and you're like, it still ain't taking it. What? Oh, the little box. Belichick values those division championships. I guess that's where it starts with both of these guys because Andy Shop has won 10 of them. He's won four in a row with the Chiefs. We weren't even close to ever winning four in a row in this franchise until he got here. But I guess the first part of greatness is prioritizing, and both of these guys – prioritize winning their division because that's where it all starts. Yeah, you always got to go down a checklist of what is going to be your goals and aspirations each and every season. The one thing Coach Reed does is he sets the environment. He t- he allows the season to run its course, and at the end of that season, he, he wraps a bow on it, put, ties it up tight, and then he moves on. He lets everybody in the organization know that last season is last season. Now we need to focus on this season. And what are our goals this season? Offensively, defensively, special teams, as a unit, as a group, as a coaching staff, as an entire organization. And one of the top boxes, when you talk about checking those boxes, dominating your division. Not just winning it, dominating your division. And also winning at home. Those are two of the top priorities, no matter if I was here uh, with the Chiefs organization, with Coach Reed in the, um, in the media broadcast type group, or as a player back in Philadelphia in 02 and 06 when I had a chance to play under him as a player, um, I, I remember vividly going into those uh, preliminary meetings before training camp, and he had a list of goals. And I remember one of the goals each and every year was dominate your division. It wasn't just win the division, it was dominate the division. The Chiefs have done that, winning 28 of the last 31 AFC West games. Again, the Chiefs have not lost a division game on a Sunday since November of 2014. The Patriots have made everybody, you got to rethink, well, who's in the AFC East? Because nobody else ever wins that division. Oh, it's the Jets, the Patriots, and the Bills. Now, the Bills are going to challenge them this year. But Belichick has just just liquefied that division so much where they're not even a factor, it seems like, until now. So... Interesting point that you make that both of these coaches place a, a, a big time importance on dominating the division. I know with Andy Reid, one of the first things I noticed with him, it could be an OTA shop, it could be a practice in St. Joe, but most of that practice would be dedicated to a division opponent. Like with what they did on that day, as far as nine on seven, even the runs they called or the teamwork that they did, it was all based around the template of that division opponent for a day. So when they had to crank it up in the regular season, oh, I can reference back to that day in August in St. Joe, or oh, let's go all the way back to June. You remember June the 7th? That was Raiders Day. That was Chargers Day. That was Broncos Day. And to your point, it's uh, where these two guys chuck that box of dominating the division. Yeah, NFL League is based off of creating parity. They, they, the, the league itself would like every team to be just a niche above or below average. Andy Reid and Bill Belichick has taken the word parody, broken it up, redefined it, mixed it up to, to, to create a, a atmosphere of, while everybody else is trying to be average, we're pursuing greatness. And that's an everyday, pushing yourselves to practice at a level, at a speed, at a pace that other teams kind of fear back from because they don't want soft tissue injuries. They don't want, uh, uh, they, they don't want uh, players to get uh, bored or uninterested. None of those things are ever a, a problem that, that I've been a part of with Coach Andy Reid. He's always pushing the envelope physically, mentally, emotionally from all the players to buy in every day at practice. you got to get better at something. you got to be pushing, striving towards something. And when you talk about good keeping you from being great and then great keeping you from being elite, that is the coaching technique and style that I think um, embodies what Andy Reid brings here to Kansas City. Well put. And I mentioned uh, Belichick's credentials. Andy's, 
the Super Bowl 54 title peeled the veneer off of this great career that I think there had been like a governor on an engine. You couldn't go faster than 50 miles an hour because all of his old critics couldn't, you know, time management and couldn't win the big one. Well, boom, the lid got blown off that with the Super Bowl 54 title. But when you look down deep, 10 division titles, as mentioned, 15 playoff wins, 225 overall wins. Uh, the, the thing is, too, about these guys is their ability to adapt. Andy Reid has this incredible ability to adapt to the game, to adapt to his roster, build his roster, but he doesn't seem to get pigeonholed in one place. Now, you started this uh, episode talking about Belichick, and to me, in studying the Patriots this week, I'm like, i got to give Belichick some credit here. It's, he's there a complete adaptation of what they were with Brady. They look more like the Baltimore Ravens now. Uh, Cam Newton can throw it. He's an excellent athlete. But then this is a run-centric offense, an aggressive take-the-ball-away defense. But his adaptation, as Andy has adapted to the change of the game, to me is brilliance in these two guys. Well, the, the Patriots, the way they lead it, they, they led the leads for so many years, was on the intelligence and arm of Tom Brady. And because that position was played at such a high level, they could almost ignore other positions. Well, when you reset that position and you bring, no matter what kind of physical talents Cam Newton brings in, he, he doesn't have the same um, mindset that Tom Brady. He doesn't know the offense like the back of his hand. You can't just change and, 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 and adjust route combinations and concepts on offense like you could when you had Tom Brady. So what do you do in that situation? You go back to what a guy is doing by nature. Cam Newton is a physical dominating player. When he runs the quarterback sneak, that, that one, two seconds of delay before he starts, now, now here I come, a lot of players are trying to make business decisions. <laughs> it's not whether you want to tackle him or not. It's, whether you're not <laughs> it's, it's a business decision whether you want to be involved with this guy. 275 pounds, six foot four. I mean, he, he's, he's, a, he's a Adonis of an athlete, mm. and he runs now with a little bit of grit, a little aggression. He has a chip on his shoulder because everybody thought he was going to be done, and he wants to remind everybody that, no, no, I was in the talk of MVP level of play only about two or three seasons ago, and people have forgotten that. And so he's in New England with a chip on his shoulder, and what Belichick realized I got this angry bull. All I got to do is say charge, wave a little red in front of him, and let him go to work. And a motivated player, as you said, Andy Reid got so close to a Super Bowl title, beaten by Belichick back in the 04 season uh, in that game where Donovan McNabb was Andy's quarterback. But Andy just, the fire burns in that dude to win his first one. He won it already. Now it burns to win the second one. But in the case of Cam Newton, He's heard way too much about Von Miller stripping him the ball in that 15 after the 15 season, and that Super Bowl didn't turn out well for for Cam when he's a Carolina Panther quarterback. So I get the sense that Cam is burning that hot to get back to the level that he's, you're talking about. But he's with the head coach and with Josh McDaniels. Let's give him credit, the offensive coordinator, where these guys now are a viable threat, but they're just doing it different. Uh, if you see Cam Newton's lead this team in rushing, but got five running backs, it's the adaptation of Belichick to take the athlete, there's very few on the planet that's ever been like Cam Newton, and say, all right, we're going to completely just re-gear this thing up. We're going to redo the wheel and rewrite the algorithms because the Patriots are different now with the Cam Newton at quarterback. And we saw what, you know, many years ago, Tim Tebow came to the league. And when Josh McDaniels had Tim Tebow, Josh McDaniels was the head coach at Denver, he used the strengths of Tim Tebow. He knew his strength wasn't his arm, it was his legs, it was his leadership, it was his desire to win. Put the team on your back and carry them five yards. Tim Tebow did that at a high, high rate. But now he has he has Tim Tebow, but also with a little cannon. And we know that if you let Cam Newton have enough time back there, he gets his feet set and throw him with the proper uh, techniques, he can, he can unleash that ball down the field. And so um, I see a, a, a resemblance of that Tim Tebow offense, but understanding that you still have to respect the seam routes and deep ball because Cam Newton is a viable passer, unlike Tim Tebow. Yeah, it's a great point. And Coach Reed, right here behind me, man, over my shoulder in this edition of Defending the Kingdom, which is our gold jacket bowl. That's this Sunday at 325 with two Hall of Fame coaches. But i got to give props now on the adaptation of Andy Reid. To me, he has taken 
what the high school and the college game has done, the spread, the RPO game, and brought it to the National Football League better than anybody else. Now, he's got Superman at quarterback doing it, who brings a perfect RPO blend because Pat Patrick can run it. We also know he makes an every throw crazy in his sleep. But, Coach, his route concepts, his formations, his position groups, his protection schemes, I don't see anybody else right now in the NFL – that is taking the RPO spread game and making it work in the NFL as good as Andy Reid. He's done this now since he's been in Kansas City, but he's doing a magnificent job of being that, okay, this is what I've got, but I've got to mold it into the NFL version of it, and he's doing exactly that. Yeah, right now you have two gourmet executive chefs. You talk about Andy <laughs> Reid and Belichick. You got Michael Smith and you got um, um, Gordon Ramsay. Uh, they're both trying to make this this, this immaculate souffle. They're adding all these spices, a little Pat Mahomes, a little a cheetah, uh, a little Clyde Hilaire. You know, he's, <laughs> he's mixing it all together for this great souffle, and it's tasting amazing. And everybody else in the NFL is just making pizza. They're taking dough, putting some sauce, throwing a little cheese and pepperoni, and, and, and hoping you're gonna like the meal. We, I mean, the, the the amount of creativity that you have to prepare for to get ready for the Kansas City Chiefs right now, a defensive coordinator is getting zero hours of sleep with a week of preparation, zero hours of sleep because every couple of hours he wakes up with a different formation, a different shift, a different concept. Oh my goodness, how are we gonna how are we gonna stop this? How are we gonna stop the the slip screen to the tight end? Now they got screen going jet screens. Now we got cheetah motion. Now we got cheetah screen. We got cheetah flare. Like like it, it's got to be just a, a, a rehearsal of, of nightmares over and over the week leading up to playing the Kansas City Chiefs. And if they were getting a nap, they aren't anymore after watching the Ravens game because the Chiefs absolutely obliterated that defense. You and I talked about it on our Chiefs Rewind show. They played man, that didn't work. They tried oh my let's try zone something we don't do a lot. Well, that didn't work. And so, but Belichick, you know, he'll come up with something. He's a defensive guy. And um, although Andy's got an offensive background, he could coach defense. And even though Belichick has a defensive background, he can coach offense. And that's why uh, these two guys are, are geniuses. The other thing they have a knack of doing is getting the most out of their players. Now, we all have looked at Belichick, you know, from afar and grouse about him and deflate gate and all that stuff. But when you're a Patriot, it seems like the whole Patriot way stuff that we hear about, it, they play higher than the ability that they seem to have. Andy Reid, our players buy into Andy Reid big time. A lot of them, we, we talked about this on a summer podcast, is they want to stay here even taking less money because they know that they're going to be better than even maybe their ability or thought they could be because Andy Reid brings it out of them. Why do these guys consistently win? To me, shop another reason is somehow, some way, they get the best out of their guys. Yeah, I mean, when you have the coaches that Andy has assembled here with Coach Spagnola, Coach Dave Toad, um, Coach Eric Bieniemy, I mean, these are four head coach qualified resume coaches all coaching for one team. And when you have that much excellence in the building, it starts to ooze out of guys. I mean, when you're walking around the building as a player, you're getting nuggets of information, leadership development, um, excellence on the field, off the field, mental toughness, championship mindset. Those things are being subconsciously implanted in your head all throughout the week. And then all those things just come to fruition on the field. Uh, other teams are trying to do it. Other teams attempt to do it. Uh, I remember uh, being on the radio a few times last week, and somebody asked me this. Because the Chiefs offense struggled, struggled in week two versus the Chargers is the blueprint on how to stop the Chiefs out. And that's if the blueprint is out, it's out for both sides. Andy's just going to look at the blueprint <laughs> and learn and figure out a way to beat that blueprint. So, and not every team has the 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 the, the resume and the the personnel that the Chargers have. And, and even if they do have it, it's so many different ways Andy can attack. One thing I love about Coach Andy Reid, every postseason interview, every postgame interview, when you ask him anything that went wrong, the first thing he says, our coaches can do better. I could have got my guys in better position to take advantage of the things they were doing. He never attacks his players. He never attacks their confidence. He's always trying to build them up to be greater, like you said. 
a greater football player, a greater attribute, and a, and a greater piece of the puzzle that makes this Kansas City Chiefs offense and team one of the most dominant that we've seen in this um, time frame. This Defending the Kingdom episode, we're calling it the Gold Jacket Bowl, the 325 game on Sunday. Two future Hall of Fame head coaches, Bill Belichick of the Patriots and Andy Reid of the Kansas City Chiefs. And by the way, our podcast brought to you by our Bose 700 headphones. Whether you're listening at a low level, low volume, or you really want to, as Sean always tries to get me to turn it up, he goes, because he's like, turn it up. So I'm going to turn it up. The Bose 700 headphones, check them out. Great for the holidays. I'm telling you, if you get these, it'll change your life. Um, One final thing here as we close this out, this edition, is these two guys head-to-head. Now, Belichick has had the better of it early on. We know he won the Super Bowl uh, back after that 2004 season. But let's hit the brakes here. Since 2014, when Coach Reed blew him out in Arrowhead Stadium 41-14 to and Brady got removed from the game, this thing's been really close. 15, the Chiefs are driving for a game – changing touchdown and Niall Davis fumbles the ball whoops okay give it that one to the Patriots 17 the opening game of the season it's supposed to celebrate the world title the year before from the Patriots the Chiefs put a 40 burger on him 42 points the second straight 42 burger of two out of the three games on Belichick all right here we go then it comes a shootout game in, in 2018, a 43 to 40 game, another 40 burger put on Belichick, although he pulls this one out. Uh, and then the uh, AFC Championship game, uh, which we all know how that ended up in 2018. But then last year, the Chiefs go to Foxborough, supposed to, supposed to lose like the other night against Baltimore. And whoops, that means Andy Reid has beaten now Bill Belichick. They are even Steven since 2014. These two guys love going against each other, but this is like looking at Colin Powell and a and a, a clone of Colin Powell on the other side. Two great generals facing off. Man, one thing greatness does it it accepts the challenge of going against other great um, coordinators, other great head coaches. One of Andy Reid's passions, I think, in this game, the reason we we know he will continue to coach this game as long as him and fifteen are together, they know they have something special. But they can always look across the field and they know that there's other coaches that are always trying to do similar, achieve more, trying to push their team for the same amount of greatness. And Andy, I think he takes it's it's a personal thing. It's something he takes so personal about the amount of pride he has. This team was built not because of stats. It's just just, a lot of things that go into building the Kansas City Chiefs that other teams don't have is that family commitment. You come in as a team but you leave as a family. That's something that's written across the wall. The, 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 the reason there are no lockers in our locker room is because you trust family. You don't worry about your family stealing from you. You don't worry about your family doing anything um, um, dishonest, uh, a man-to-man. We're here part of a team here as a family to go win games, to go commit ourselves. We're all sacrificing our time and our talents to create something special in one calendar season. And he gets guys to focus Focus in and really honor that on so many different levels of the organization. And so he's a visionary and he's one of the greatest. Uh, obviously, you can tell I care about the man. I played under him for two years. Um, it ain't because he makes uh, some really good cheeseburgers on the weekends, <laughs> but I mean, he's just he's just a, he's, a, he's a great guy. And he, but he does ask you to be better. He asks you to be a, the best version of yourself on a daily basis and commit yourself to the team, to the team's vision. And the years I had to play under him, I did that. And I think he made me a better man today. Yeah, these pictures behind me, there's our guy right there on my shoulder. But he loves this, the Chiefs' kingdom, and he loves this, his players. But you, I'm glad you brought it up, the family feeling. We'll close this way. One of my favorite moments, I've only done this 27 years as the voice of the Chiefs, just getting started. But one of my favorite moments was after that game in Foxborough in 2017 when the Chiefs absolutely stunned those dudes. Uh, that was not supposed to happen. And the, that 40-burger got put up in Foxborough. And after the game, Bill Pel- Belichick was asked what happened, and he goes, we just got Andy Reid. He made Andy Reid a verb and an adverb and an adjective all in one thing, and I thought, perfect. And Belichick said, here's my sword. You can take it. That's what we're going to get Sunday afternoon, two great coaches. Shop, thanks for being with us. I know you're fired up for Sunday afternoon. So am I. I just want the Chiefs kingdom. Don't take it for granted. You're getting Shula. Landry, Lambeau, uh, all the great coaches you can think of are going to be squared up right out here, all bundled up in those two guys on each sideline.
Definitely. Well, we know around the league, everybody's going to be watching this game because these are two of the best minds in football. And what they do is going to be a game of chess, not checkers. It's going to be a game of chess. It's going to be high-level moves being made on that field to get up. Just that, that inch of advantage. And whoever takes advantage, less amount of mistakes, they're going to count on their players to make big plays. But they're going to both be putting their, position, putting their players in position to take advantage of each other. I, I, I take my hats off to Coach Belichick, but we got one of the best in history right here in Arrowhead, right here in Kansas City with Coach, uh, uh, Coach Jim Reed. You and I are blessed for so many reasons, but we're blessed because we have Andy Reed as our head coach. Andy. It's chess with two chess masters. That's what you got in this one. He's Sean Barber, a.k.a. The Shop, a.k.a. The Barber Shop, The Spider-Man. I'm Mitch Holtis, voice of the Chiefs. Get ready for the Gold Jacket Bowl, the Hall of Fame game for 2020. Chiefs against the Patriots, 325 kickoff. And let's get ready to run it back.